this episode we will talk about not panic and not result because we already introduced panic and result in the previous videos but i want to talk more about when we should use panic and when we should use result or not the panic macro in rust we introduced error handling a couple of lessons ago so let's see in details which are the use cases panic you can see this here on the left indicates an unrecoverable error and results you can see this on the right allows to handle the error in a more let's say graceful way it's similar to the concept of exceptions you can see here this ok error in here for example you can see the panic macro when should we use the panic macro there are some use cases one is uh, in some examples when we are doing a prototype of a bigger application but we want just to get started for tests this is a spoiler we will see this and also when the code ends in a very unexpected way in this case we want the program to stop and not continue and also this is interesting when we have more information about the code rather than the compiler for some um, human logic that we are applying here let's say that we want to show an example in rust what we can do is that we can intentionally call the panic macro we can see here on line 12 so we can call it intentionally as programmers for example here we want to access index in a vector that doesn't exist you see you can see here a vector with three elements and we want to access the element on position 11 because we are indexing the position number 10 and we start counting from zero in this case we will have an error anyway a panic anyway but we can also call this intentionally another use case is when we have some prototype code so we are just you know getting started you know, in writing our rust program in this case we can use unwrap and expect you can check the previous video when i explain what unwrap and expect are a quick recap is that unwrap based basically calls the panic function and the expect also calls the panic macro but with a string on line 11 on the example below that we basically return a specific message so expect gives let's say a bit of error handling but still the code and the program panics let's say that in the future we want to add a more useful error handling but for now, you know, at least we want to start to put a sort of placeholder for when we'll come back and we'll handle this error more properly. Another use case for panic is for test. This is a huge spoiler because we didn't see test in Rust yet. Test, I think in Rust are very, very convenient compared to other programming languages. But let's say that we want to test our code. In case test fails, we want the whole code to panic you can see here on line 11 and another use case for panic is when we have something very strange an unexpected state for example here do we want to panic in case we get a temperature which is lower than 273 celsius degrees we know that this is not physically possible let's pretend that this number has not been passed by a user but maybe i don't know by a sensor by another program and in this case we want the program to panic something bad really happened here check line 8 temperature is below absolute zero this is not physically possible another case where we can use the panic macro is that we know something about the code that the compiler does not let's see this example check line one we define an hard coded ip address and then on line two we want to just use it in case we have an error here we can return a message using the expect method hey we should have the IP here because we just hard coded it. This is a custom message for us or other developers that uh, informs the developer of a very strange behavior. Another use case might be that we are reading from a configuration file and we know 
that this configuration file should be there. If the configuration file is not there, probably something happened, I don't know, in the deployment, uh, or I don't know, it has been deleted by someone. In those cases, we want uh, probably the code to stop executing. I remind you that the panic mode in Rust is a way to just stop executing everything and start clearing the stack and all the memory because we don't want the user to access random blocks in memory. This can lead to some security issues. And now let's see when can we use a result. A result is used to handle errors. We want to handle errors when we have an expected failure. A uh, clear use case is uh, when we have HTTP request. We have uh, like HTTP codes for 200, 300, 400. This is to handle the failure in this case. And another use case is when we want the code to be more flexible. We decide that we want to handle the error and not just the, the program stop executing. We will see some example scenarios. One is when we get an input from the user which is not what we expect. Let's say that we expect a number and we get a string. Or for example, if we want to handle some rate limiting in an HTTP request. And also, and this is very interesting, is when we want a custom error type. We can create a custom error types in Rust. For example, let's say that we want to handle parsing errors. Check the line two here. We get a user input, we expect a number and the user intentionally or not intentionally, they type 42a. In this case, we can have a function, you can see this on line 10, to parse the number and you see that we get an input, a string, and then we get a result in output here. Check the signature here in the function. And then we trim this input and then we parse to try to read a number. And in this case, we can have an OK, and in this case, we return the number, otherwise we will return this error. And then we use this parse number function here on line 4 with another match statement. And in this case, you see, we handle the error. And for example, here we can simply ask the input again to the user, so we don't have to stop the execution of our program because our user did something strange. Another example might be when we want to handle, let's say, rate limiting in HTTP requests. So let's say that we want to fetch some data. And in case we fail, we don't want to just to stop trying, but we want to try three times. We have, in case we fetch data and is OK, we get the response. Otherwise, in case we have an error, we try three more times. Check here. In case we have this error here, this is rate limited and we retry after one second. You see, we are handling the error and in case we fail for three times, maybe you know, we have network issues and so on, then we return the specific error. This snippet demonstrates how we can handle this rate limiting in HTTP using the result type. You see here the result. We are returning the result. Another great use case for uh, error handling is uh, that we can create some custom types. I think this is very interesting and very powerful. Let's say that we want to make a guess number game in Rust and we want the user to just input a value which is between 1 and 100 and of course it has to be a number. We have this struct which is just a guess with a value i32, but check here the implementation of the struct. If you want, there is a video about the structs. This is the implementation of methods for the guess struct. If the value is lower than 1 or bigger than 100, we return an error. And check the output of this function. This is a result which is a guess in case we get a number between 1 and 100 or a string. Why a string? Because we want to return the error type. And we can see here on line 20 and 25, if we try the guess with the number 50, this is validated. Otherwise, we'll return an error on line 27 if we try to create a guess number which is above 100. So this is how we can create custom types for error handling in Rust. So the key points are that you can use the panic macro 
for unrecoverable errors and the program will stop executing, or we can return the result type if we want to manage these errors. This is very similar to the exceptions way of coding in other programming languages, for example Java. We can use the Rust type system for validation, of course, and we can create, as we did some seconds ago, some custom types to encapsulate the validation of other types or other functions logic.